Good morning. I'm Pastor Laura and welcome to State Street Online. We miss you when we don't see you in person, but isn't it a blessing that we can still worship together? God's love spans the distance. God's love binds us together. God's love gives us strength and courage. God's love reminds us we are never alone. So let's prepare our hearts for this time of worship together. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sin like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning, it's time to sing your song again.
am sure that all of us have many concerns and prayers on our hearts today. And so as we enter into this time of prayer together, if there are ways that we can be in prayer for you, there is a prayer portal that's available on our website and we would be happy to lift you up as your church family. Let us pray. God of life, we confess that we come to this day of resurrection as imperfect people. Although we may have faith, we also carry doubts and apprehensions. Just as Jesus' disciples were unsure of his presence with them, we are unsure of your presence with us at times. And we go out into a world of demand sometimes without the full confidence that you are our guide and our sustainer. And we are too often motivated by our own shortcomings and anxieties than by your grace and love. Forgive us and help us to see your Holy Spirit's work in all things. As we lay at your feet all who suffer in body and mind and spirit, all who live in darkness or fear, all who struggle to find hope, may today be peace within for all of us. May we trust that we are exactly where we are meant to be. May we not forget the infinite possibilities that are born of faith. May we use the gifts that we have received and pass on the love that you have given to us. May we be confident knowing that we are your children. Let this presence settle into our bones and allow our soul the freedom to sing, dance, praise, and love. We know that this promise, this good news, is there for each and every one of us. Help us to live it. And we pray in the name of Jesus who showed us how to live, how to love, how to serve. And we pray together the prayer that he taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Life in Christ provides so many blessings, and we are challenged to live those blessings in the ways that we share with others, in the ways that we offer the love of Christ, in the ways that we give and serve and love. Let us pray. Holy One, bless and multiply, multiply the gifts we give as tokens of our trust in you. Use them to bless the poor, to feed the hungry, and to comfort those who weep. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 through 20. Hear the word of God. Paul says, Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised then our proclamation has been in vain, and your faith has been in vain. 
we are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified of God that He raised Christ, whom He did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who have died in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, you are our rock. You are our redeemer. You are our life. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. So I'm going to try out a couple of jokes today, which is certainly a very hard thing to do when you're talking to a camera. But maybe you can laugh where you are. Do you know where zombies live? On dead-end streets. Now, what is a, a zombie's favorite language? Latin, because it's a dead language. And which sea do zombies swim in? Well, the Dead Sea, of course. And why was the zombie comedian booed off the stage? And you may want to apply this to me this morning. Because most of the jokes she said had gone dead. Contemporary North American culture might be read as a culture obsessed with the limits of mortality and with death. Our fascination with zombies is one area where that is given creative expression. Popular video games are filled with zombie characters. Zombies show up in, in sci-fi movies, in cartoons, even Super Bowl ads. Maybe it's because death is this universal human horror we try to defeat but even with incredible med medical advances and progress, the horror remains ever before us. And during this pandemic, we receive daily reminders of mortality. Every day, the statistics appear. Over 900,000 people in the United States have now died from COVID, and that number is 5.76 million worldwide. And we've also been experiencing our mortality in the sense of realizing there is so much we have no control over, no matter how hard we try. So what are we to do? How are we to live in the midst of that reality? In our scripture lesson for today, Paul is confronting understandings of death and mortality. One of the main topics of disagreement that has been going on in the Corinthian church is about the resurrection of the dead. Some assumed it was impossible. Others reckoned, well, it might happen, but only as part of an occasional and isolated miraculous event like with the prophet Elijah. Still, others asserted that it was something just spiritual. Maybe the soul of a person could make its way to heaven, but certainly not our bodies. And in true Greek and Roman fashion of the day, there would be all kinds of academic discussions and debates about it, People would jockey for recognition for their opinion, spirited conversation that would sometimes become difficult. So here Paul is, and he's joining in the discussion. 
And as we talked about last Sunday in the earlier section of this chapter, Paul lays down the proof that Jesus was in fact resurrected from the dead in flesh and blood by naming a whole host of witnesses who had seen him in body, face to face, resurrected. And for most of the Corinthians, that truth is not in dispute. It's when it comes to whether or not the resurrection of the body is a promise, not just for Jesus or for some miraculous person, but for everyday human beings. That's where the skepticism emerges. Maybe you feel that way too. What do we do with those beliefs that we can't really prove, that maybe don't fit with our human experience? A virgin giving birth, a sea being parted, a man walking on water, a savior coming back from the dead. Paul's push is that what is most crucial in our faith journey is not that we understand how it happens or grasp all of the details or even accept it all as truth in the sense of scientifically validated. No, what is most crucial in our faith journey is to surrender to the promise that the offer of an eternal life is given to us even in the midst of our mortal and limited lives, even in the face of death. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is not just a nice story about one person who defeats death. No, Jesus' resurrection from the dead was really not about him at its core. It's for us. Our resurrection from the dead is at the very core and heart of the incarnation, this act of God determining that our human flesh, our human lives are worth rescuing, worth redeeming, so much so that God put on our human flesh, walked among us, faced what we face. Jesus Christ defeated death. Jesus Christ defeated sin. Jesus Christ rose to give us the courage to live full and resurrected and redeemed lives, not just as some future hope after our time on earth is done, but right now, today. I want to get back to our zombies for a little bit. Wikipedia establishes the characteristics of a zombie as able to move, but technically dead, without a heartbeat or other vital signs, non-communicative, lots of groaning and howling instead of speaking, unemotional with no mercy toward victims, contagious, a person bitten by a zombie will become a zombie makes you wonder if we're all becoming zombies. Today, we are being called to cast aside these zombie temptations, to live, these zombie temptations to live as if we are dead, or to be given the offer to live as if we have hope, as if death and the power of death has been defeated. The resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead instills in us a power and a promise that gives us courage to live as forgiven and redeemed and saved and delivered people of God who know and understand that we matter, that our lives matter, that God loves us so much that anything we might be tempted to believe can possibly separate us from love and a redeemed life has already been defeated. We're winners. 
were victorious. And this, perhaps most importantly, should also drive the way we relate with one another as well, with our community, with strangers, even with enemies, with the world. Because this victory is not just ours. It's a gift Christ gave to the whole world, a sacrifice made on behalf of the whole world, every person, every creature, every aspect of life and fulfillment. Love never lets go in Christ, but also in us. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 10, summarize, gives a summary of what this resurrection life can look like. Not just as some future hope, but in the here and now, today. And I'm going to be reading the first section of those verses from the message interpretation. Sometimes it's a good exercise to look at different interpretations of the scriptures and can give you a new understanding or reflection. So in that first section, the message says, Cursed is the strong one who depends on mere humans, who thinks he can make it on muscle alone and sets God aside as dead weight. He's like a tumbleweed on the prairie, out of touch with the good earth. He lives rootless and aimless in a land where nothing grows. Seems like a zombie kind of life. But listen to these verses that follow, and this time from the New Revised Standard Version. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when the heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, and it does not cease to bear fruit. Two ways to live zombie life, the resurrected life. This is the choice we are given through the life and offerings of Jesus. They come to us through the love and grace of Jesus Christ. They come to us because Jesus lived and died and rose for our sake. We are encouraged and we can be grounded as we hold on to that faith. Always remember, love never gives up. Love never ends. Let us pray. Holy God, come into our hearts. Wrap your love around us in ways that we can be witnesses and be strong in that love to face whatever we have to face, knowing that your resurrected life is with us always. In Jesus' name, amen.
chaos in the strife for those he came to save his glory is now we sing who died and rose on thine who died been good to share in this time of worship together. And I challenge all of us to go forth and live, to have courage to be strong, to cast aside the weight that may be holding us back, to not be afraid to live a resurrected life. Christ's victory is our victory, not just as something to hope for in the future, but now, today. And I do pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you. I pray that the Lord will make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And I pray that the Lord will lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>